Today we're talking about the book project, Pandemic Nurse's Diary, and it is a very interesting compilation, I must say, because there's so many different angles on it, and I'm also helping um, produce a, an audio of a few of the essays with a nurse I know, uh, Riverside, and I guess taking a step back, how did this project come together, and who is Nurse T? Sure, well, Nurse T is a nurse, a veteran nurse, who works in an intensive care unit in one of the New York boroughs. And she wants to be anonymous and she wants her facility to be anonymous. So that's how we gave her the name Nurse T. Uh, she contacted me uh, early on in the pandemic in March when things were really going, really going bad in her facility. And she knows me through my Lenny Moss novels and through my labor, my labor work. Um, so she sent me some messages about how terrible the conditions were, uh, the feelings of fear, anger, sorrow, it's so much loss. And at one point she wrote to me, Tim, when this is over, you've got to write a book. And I wrote back to her and I said, no, Nurse T, you've got to write the book and you've got to write it now because people need to know what's going on now. So we started exchanging information. She would send me stories. I would then revise them, shape them, add a little color to them, send them back to her and say, is this honest? Is this true? Is this you? And because I am an old ICU nurse, worked for 40 years, I was able to put myself in her shoes. And having written, you know, 11 novels, you know, I had a little bit of experience with shaping a story. And so together, you know, I helped her and shaped this diary and um, once the diary was finished, we then explored what kind of feelings uh, the healthcare workers were, were going through, what kind of emotional trauma. And we came up with a number of meditations and writing exercises, uh, which, which she and I both feel could help heal some of the emotional wounds that they suffered. Yeah, that's something that I really appreciate about this, this work is that it goes beyond these very heartfelt, sorrowful uh, essays, but then they're, they do end on hope, many of them. And you also have these writing exercises and even the four second meditation uh, exercise, which I, I think every child should be equipped with in this crazy world and every adult, and we should be teaching that everywhere. And, and then meditations actually on specific emotions like sorrow, anger, and loneliness. Very cool. <laughs> you also have drawings uh, in the book that are, mm -hmm. are really beautiful sketches. And uh, you put together some music, as you, uh, you uh, discussed earlier. Um, can you talk a little bit about who did the drawings and, and what this music is about that you produced? Sure, sure. Well, I, uh, two of the children's books that I produced, uh, the illustrations were done by a wonderful young artist named Anna Usachiva. And she did uh, lovely drawings. And so uh, Nurse T and I, when we talk about the book, we thought we'd like to have some simple black and white illustrations uh, to just to adorn it and kind of show uh, what, what we were facing, what they were facing in the hospital. So uh, here's an example of it. So um, I, I called up Anna and I said, would you be interested in doing some black and white for me? And she was thrilled. So I sent her a number of uh, photographs as models and say, okay, use it as a model and then draw something like it. Not the same identical, but something like it. Use it as an, as an idea. And she just created some beautiful, beautiful uh, illustrations for the book. And a number of people have commented how much that they liked them and, and how much they moved them. 
So I've been working with uh, nurse Kim Hoyer out in Riverside, California, who's, who's helped with some of the, the audio of uh, the readings. And she's been impacted listening and, and reading and going through the process. And to take a step back on the, the bigger question of essential workers, and there's all of these people in this country and around the world who are providing essential work at this time during this pandemic and their story's not getting out. And I guess what you've done with this diary is to really try to capture that story and try to humanize that from outside of the, the hospital. And, and it's, it's just so appreciated and such a, a beautiful project. And, and what are some of your thoughts about how you'd like to see this distributed uh, as you're releasing it going forward? Sure, well, you know, being a, a, a small imprint with no budget, uh, I have no marketing, you know, no money for marketing. So I rely on word of mouth and social media. And if I could just say a quick note about the music, my son asked me to take guitar lessons from a friend of his when the code would really clamp down because the musicians were all going broke. They were really, their income dropped out. The clubs were all closed. And I didn't expect to get much out of it, but he taught me so much. He unlocked a world of melody and harmony and syncopation. And so I'm playing my guitar like I've never played it in my life. And these melodies are coming up out of the guitar and they needed lyrics. And so I started writing songs for my coworkers in the hospital. And the songs are really to honor them and you know, to speak to them and speak for them, you know, to give them voice. And I put together a virtual band, which means I would record a vocalist with me strumming the guitar. Then I'd take the computer and the microphone to a bass player. He'd take it off his hands. He'd record his bass run in his apartment. He'd pass it on to a violin player who would add a violin track. I'd send it to the drummer when all the, tra when all the songs were, were done and he'd add drum tracks to all the songs. And it was truly a, 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 a pandemic band. It was like a truly virtual band. It was the craziest process, but we made it work and uh, it's been uploaded now and hopefully next week they'll be available. The band is called The Pandemics. So, man. so the question of labor issues, and there's a lot of people who've grown up in this country th that have no class consciousness, have no interest, or at least they don't think they have any interest in labor issues or labor focused writing, fiction, nonfiction. So why, why, do you, why should people care about labor issues? Yeah, that's such an important question, Evan. And it's, it's such, a sad, such a sad lament that the corporations, the wealthy people who own the shares in the corporations, they don't want to pay w working people what they deserve. They want to maximize their profits. And in order to maximize their profits, they want to minimize their labor costs, which means if you look at the, the gig economy, they don't even want to have workers that are considered employees. They want everyone to be independent contractors. So they don't have to pay health insurance. They don't have to pay unemployment insurance. They don't have to pay, uh, they pay for uh, time off for holidays. Uh, it's like a Christmas story, uh, you know, where Ebenezer Scrooge doesn't want to pay his one employee Christmas off with a pay, with a day's pay. Why should I pay you a, a day's wages? You're not earning, earning me anything. And so there's a, there's a longstanding conflict between the interest of the owners who want to minimize their costs and the workers who want a fair, fair share, not to mention a safe environment to work in, you know, not to mention time off for, for uh, patern paternity leave and so on. And so you know, when a worker goes to a boss and says, I, I really deserve more. I'm not, I can't live on this. My children are going hungry. The boss can say, well, too bad. Take a hike. I'll get somebody else. The only way that working people can get any kind of close to a fair deal is if they work together and organize. And I learned that uh, as a young, very young person in, in high school, there was a huge newspaper strike in New York City. My dad was the reporter. It was over the Christmas holidays, so, and, and uh, I was maybe 12, 13 years old, and we didn't have much money. And my dad went into the city on the bus, and he came back with a turkey and stuffing and all the dressings, 
that the labor, other labor unions had all pooled their money and had bought them a, a Christmas dinner for all the people on strike. And I learned at a very young age that it's only with solidarity that we get anywhere. So that's a message that unfortunately is suppressed in a lot of the mainstream media. If you look at the TV shows, how many TV shows show workers, you know, demanding their fair share in, in a, in a storyline? Um, so anyway, so I, I, I just trying to do my part by putting these stories out there and get them read as widely as possible. And that's why we have to support independent publishers like Hardball Press and, and all the work that you're doing with all, all of your writers. And to raise this issue about essential workers are the ones who are creating value. You know, the people who own the capital can only produce and generate actual true value through the labor of people working on that capital and labor precedes capital. It comes before capital and we should value it such. And uh, all the work that you're doing is really, really helping with that. And uh, we need to support independent publishers. So everyone should get this uh, pandemic nurse's diary. So in, yeah, there it is. And so in closing, where do you see optimism and hope? Working people have to stand together and not be fooled. You know, so many working people were fooled by Trump and supported him out of admiration for him because he's wealthy. They don't understand that he stole his wealth. His wealth is stolen and he is not your friend. And hopefully there'll be more of an awakening, uh, by, especially among the young people, and, and they'll see that. Well, thank you very much, Tim Sheard, Hardball Press. Uh, and everyone should go out and get the pandemic nurse's diary. So. Thank you for all your work. Thank you so much, Evan. Close your eyes. Time to sleep now. You have someone to call to. The pain is gone. It will keep now. For a patient and nurse to care for you, the war is still.